um, we have September 1st and the first Tuesday of the month. And that means a legal update from our lawyer, Yvonne Bachmann. Hello, Yvonne. Welcome. Hello, Jin Dobre and Guten Tag. Hi. Um, I hope you guys can hear us good. And um, if you could verify this and give us an OK in the chat, if everything is fine with the voice, and then we will just uh, start off with the first topic. OK, I think that, OK, I got from, from the other stream I got in there. OK, yeah. We are fine. We can we can start. Um, so yeah, hello again, everyone. And um, maybe we will start off with you, Yvonne. Uh, maybe you could uh, introduce yourself, uh, what you do at Handlerbund, what you do every day for those of of our viewers who haven't tuned in last uh, last time and would like to know who you are. Yeah, thanks, Nikolai Chindorpa, to all of you uh, listeners. Um, my name is Yvonne Bachmann. I'm a lawyer at Händlerbund. Uh, we are an e-commerce association, so we give advice um, to online traders in every aspect that concerns e-commerce. For example, we provide um, the legal text, such as terms and conditions, and help in everyday business. And I'm an editor as well, so I report and, yeah, investigate uh, legal uh, topics and uh, find out the, the newest uh, court decisions and try to um, explain them mm -hmm. to our readers on our uh, online handler news uh, website. So um, yes, I give legal advice and I'm really experienced, but I also uh, know the other side and know what's new in e-commerce and uh, yeah e-commerce law. So uh, thanks for having me here. And I'd like to share my experience and the latest news uh, in e-commerce law. And yeah, Nikolai already prepared some questions. And I'm really happy to share uh, all the information with you. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Yvonne. And good to have you with us again. And uh, let's dive straight into the first one, uh, shall we? And um, I mean, it's uh, something that everyone encounters at supermarkets and other shops uh, where there are products which are in packages, which are in, uh, measured by milliliters, by liters, etc. Uh, and you can see it on almost every price tag, and it's the unit prices. And that's not only offline, uh, in, in offline stores, but you also uh, see them on uh, marketplaces or online shops. And um, that's actually our first topic, the unit prices. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe just start off and tell us uh, what the unit prices are. And um, we'll move then to the legal obligations e-commerce merchants have regarding the unit prices. Yeah, sure. I'd like to introduce you in that um, yeah, re requirement, I would say. Um, anyone who sells goods to customers uh, that are offered uh, stating their weight, volume, length or space must add the price per unit to the sales price. So e.g. food is sold uh, per kilograms or per liter, uh, beverages, something like that. And you have to add the price per kilogram, the price per 100 gram or tape, for example, is sold per meter, for example, 10 meter, 20, 50 meter, and you have to add the price per meter or as well, uh, fabrics that are sold per square meter and you have to add the price per unit. Why is that so? Uh, the price per unit is to attend it, um, to enable the consumer to uh, make an easier price comparison. For example, if you have an, uh, an fabric uh, and it has a different length or a, a different um, yeah size of that fabric and you need to add this the price per square meter so the customer can compare the, the price per meter and see what's the cheapest product. Yeah. Exactly. That's the reason why there are these um, unit prices on, on, on the on the websites or as well in the supermarket. And um, yeah, so we now know which products are affected. Can you give us some examples for, of I mean in, in the, what are the uh, e-commerce products that mostly have such uh, unit price obligations? Um, I would say uh, I, I often see cosmetic products, which is, um, yeah, or shower uh, stuff and uh, hair wash and uh, 
perfume, for example, can uh, uh, there's often the price per unit missing. Uh, fabric is a, um, a topic where we have a lot of written warnings because the most of the traders state the wrong price per unit. They say uh, the price per meter, which is not correct. Uh, the, uh, in the in the case of fabric, you have to add the price per square meter. That's the, the thing. Um, um, yeah, for example, as I've already mentioned, food and beverages, um, for everything that is sold per gram, per kilogram, uh, per, per meter, per square meter, so every product um, where it is uh, necessary to, to know the, yeah, the weight or the length. And you have to add that per unit even candles i have um, a, a court decision where the court said uh, a candle just a regular candle as you can see here and uh, um, uh, the trader mentioned uh, the, uh, the way he said it's 250 grams and the court said if you sell a candle per weight or per gram you have to add the price per unit so if you're not sure, ask your lawyer or ask me or Nikolai and we'll find out. But if you're not sure, it's not wrong to add the price per unit. It's, it, you can overdo. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's more, um, yeah, you can cause a written warning if you haven't added the price per, price per unit. But if, uh, if you have it and it's not necessary, so what? Uh, nothing can happen. It has to be the right price per unit. You have to calculate it right, but uh, there's no no harm in adding it without any necessity. So yeah, add it if you're not sure, ask us. Yeah. That's actually great info, so that we are always on the safe side if you yeah. actually add it, if there is any indicator that it might be needed at this product. I'd like For to example, add one thing. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to. There's no price per unit per piece. So if you. Uh, for example, uh, of uh, envelopes, so 100 envelopes to, for your regular mail. There's no price per you, uh, pr price per piece, so you don't have to add uh, the price per one envelope. So uh, there's no price per piece. I've I'm often asked that, or for example, pens. You you you're offering uh, ten pens or something like that. So to write, and, and there's no price per piece. So be sure you can add it. You can, uh, but you're not uh, forced to. So there's no such uh, law that uh, yeah, yeah. requires that's, such. An that's invention. actually why it is called unit price, right? It's it's per right. unit, not per piece, yeah. not per item. Yeah. But okay. funnily, I'm I'm so much uh, or so often asked uh, if the, if it is a requirement to to add the price per piece or per yeah whatever. Sure. <laughs> okay. So I think. Uh, we are done with this one. Is there any question? Uh, if there is any question, uh, please uh, ask us in the chat and we will um, answer the question in the Q&A round at, at the end of, of this uh, episode. And now let's move on to the next one, which is um, some classic topic. I think we are, we've had it, I think, some some uh, someday uh, also also during e-commerce news PL live it's uh, advertising statements that are not allowed and it's all it's it's often an advertising statement which is something obvious which is something where you as a seller are obliged to offer this kind of service or this um, kind of right to the consumer and um, what are the boundaries to advertise with it and can you give us some examples yeah, sure. It's the thing behind this. You don't or you're not allowed to um, advertise something uh, as something special in your shop, which is the law anyway. For example, insured shipping. Um, it's, it's an oldie but goldie insured shipping. Um, you have to know that the merchant or you as uh, the trader and the one who's offering the good uh, in, a, uh, in a commercial way, you bear the risk of damage or loss of the parcel on the way to your consumer. So if you advertise insured shipping, such as you take responsibility if the good is um, or the parcel is lost or damaged, you um, uh, yeah, give the information that the consumer has something or uh, gets something special in your shop, which is not the case because it's the law uh, and you... Uh, Therefore, um, 
advertise in a misleading way, uh, as the law would say, and you're not allowed to state that in your shop that because it's the law anyway. And so in short shipping is a no go. You're not allowed to advertise with in short shipping because you uh, take the responsibility anyway. So, for example. Mm -hmm. And what about B two B? Is there if the, if I if I have uh, if I have an online shop which is B two B only, and as far as I know, um, there might be some exclusions from the responsibility for the uh, shipment. Yes, uh, it's absolutely correct, uh, and it's all really, uh, only um, yeah applicable uh, to consumers and to um, uh, people that are buying in a private manner. But uh, if um, there's a uh, commercial shopper or someone that's uh, buying for his own shop or for a business or something like that, B two B classic B two B shop or B two B sale, there's uh, the complete different uh, different. Uh, uh, legal yeah, way because the buyer takes the responsibility, the commercial buyer takes the responsibility. And if you state that even uh, commercial buyers in your shop uh, are insured shipping because you take the responsibility uh, responsibility freely and voluntarily, so you can state it because it's not the law. You give more and you allow you are allowed to yeah advertise with something you providing or uh, yeah giving more than the law so, so like to sum it up, you actually are always allowed if you give something extra than what is required yeah. from law but actually you have to know what is required by law and that's yeah. always the point where it's good to if you if you have any um if you if you are not sure about whether it is allowed by or required by law or if it is something ex extra you would like to give because you are super uh, consumer friendly uh, or customer friendly then always uh, ask um, for example Yvonne in next yeah. in the next episode or uh, in the chat um, after after this ex episode if you if you uh, already have this question and um, this mm -hmm. example yeah, sure. um, so the other thing uh, I think that uh, is always um, stated and advertised on on websites and marketplace accounts and uh, marketplace product pages is uh, the warranty mm -hmm. and um, your there are manufacturer warranties there are um, seller warranties mm -hmm. and um, you're not allowed to just claim that there's for example 10 years of warranty you will have to give mm -hmm. some extra information what are these yeah um, uh, just, uh, just to um, give an explanation um, it's uh, quite uh, different from the uh, legal or the, the, the guarantee uh, provided by law, for example, the 24 months or two years, a warranty is something given voluntarily. And uh, of course, you are allowed to uh, advertise a warranty because it's um, your decision or your, uh, your manufacturer's decision to give an additional warranty. So you're free to buy um, uh, yeah, advice advertise sorry advertise it um, but you have to provide uh, all these conditions for example the length of the warranty who gives the warranty what is necessary to do uh, if you uh, have a warranty um, case uh, is there any um, national boundaries is it only valid in within the european union or whatever i can um, yeah provide all those information different from every warranty because everyone has uh, certain different conditions, but uh, think of what is necessary, where is it uh, um, valid and all those stuff. And then you have to sum it up in your warranty conditions or in your warranty guidelines, and you have to provide it in your shop. So you should add it uh, within your product description. I know that's not possible for everyone, for example, on platforms like Amazon or eBay, you don't have the space and yeah, of course it doesn't look really nice, um, but you have to add it uh, within your product description or a, a link to a certain yeah, website um, on your on, in your online shop or somewhere else, uh, but be sure the link is, yeah, valid or there's the certain uh, there's that information you need and but 
to sum it up, you have to have uh, warranty conditions, uh, full warranty conditions, and you have to provide them in your shop or on a certain website that the customers um, yeah, can have a look at it. And um, yeah, that's the requirement. And it's a really, really common uh, yeah, reason for written warnings. It's, it's it's, 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 so it's one of the, just, it's, it's the oh, top 10 yeah. of it's within the top 10 because um it's so easily to state that uh, five years of warranty 10 years of warranty yeah. but uh, there's no description and uh, yeah your competitors love that so they can go to their lawyer and and send a written warning yeah and it is really easy to find. You actually have yeah. only to look at the search yeah. engine for, on eBay, on Amazon for guarantee, for example, in Germany, and mm -hmm. uh, you will find probably hundreds of uh, auctions yeah. or eBay or Amazon listings where there is some information about the warranty, but there is no uh, warranty guidelines or warranty policy. Yeah. And those are probably easy to find by by all those um, competitors and lawyers who are looking for such um, praise. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah, OK, so um, that is basically it. You have to inform your customers about the boundaries, about the um, rules, about your own warranty. You are actually, this is something where the seller or the, or the, or the manufacturer can decide on what the rules are, uh, because that's something extra you can give to your customers. But you have to describe very detailed how it works and uh, what the what the conditions are. Okay, um, so before moving on to the Q and A round, um, there is one last thing I would like to talk to you, Yvonne, mm -hmm. and that's uh, privacy protection. And um, in daily business and daily online business uh, mostly, and um, it's one of the most asked questions we get: How mm -hmm. can I get in touch with my former customers? to stimulate them to buy again in my shop? Yeah. Uh, well, Nikolai, unfortunately, there are uh, the possibilities are really limited. Um, so um, one legal option is, of course, to send the customer, uh, your, your customer or your former customer, a newsletter. But the thing is, he has to, uh, hasn't given his consent prior you send the email. So in most of the cases, it's not the case. So there is no consent of your former customer or that he's agreed to any newsletter or yeah, email advertising. So in addition, you can send a uh, regular mail, which is really unrestricted, I would say. So you can send him a letter and fly or something like that. But most of the possibilities are uh, uh, required um, a consent, which in most of the cases, we don't have. So I have to say that I've seen so many shops and the requirement is if you collect the email of your customer the first time, you have to inform him that you like to send him newsletter and mail advertising. And you have to consent in that step. For example, he gives your he gives his email the first time. And I haven't seen any shops in my seven years uh, that provided that information on, uh, yeah, provided that checkbox in the shop. The second um, yeah, requirement is you have to advertise things that he bought previously. So if you have a shop for yeah, exercising stuff, for example, yeah, pants and training shoes, and he bought, for example, a pair of Nike shoes and you are not allowed to uh, advertise with the newest Nike shirt. So, for example, other running stuff, it's not allowed. And so the options are really, really limited. So you need, uh, basically, you need the consent or you can advertise by regular mail and maybe you can think of anything else and ask me, but um, yeah, that's <laughs> the bad news, I would say. Okay, so just to make this clear, um, you are under no conditions allowed to contact your customer, even if it's <clears throat> regarding some similar products, or is it like an uh, is it an exclusion? Can you it contact is... them? Sorry. Yeah. Finish? Uh, so so do, do you always have to have the um, consent of the customer, 
or can you contact him regarding some products which have been or some basic, similar products? Mm -hmm. The basic case is yes, the GDPR, for example, says yes, you have to have the consent. So um, this is the, the the basic rule you have to follow. In uh, certain cases, you can um, yeah rely on a rule that doesn't need the consent, but the restrictions are so. Um, uh, yeah, uneasy to follow. So you, as I've mentioned, you have to inform your customer when collecting your email, his email address in your shop. So you have to inform him. I am um, using your email address for further advertising, which I haven't seen. I I don't know. It's it's I, basically it's easy to get that uh, yeah checkbox, um, but no one actually has. I you can. Uh, but you can add it and then you can um, advertise similar products. And in that case, it would be possible. Yes. OK. okay. Mm -hmm. so I think that's at least to me, it's clear. But um, if there are any questions um, to <clears throat> from our viewers, please uh, don't hesitate to ask them in the chat and we will answer them. And um, let's move on to the next uh, often asked question in uh, regard to privacy protection. Uh, can I call a former customer, B2B mm -hmm. or B2C, are there any differences? But can I make a phone, phone call to, to one of, of my, my former customers? Mm -hmm. Or is it the same like with the, with the emails? Yeah, basically, yes, the same applies to calls as to email advertising because your customer could feel harassed. He, he doesn't want you to be calling him as you already know, or you maybe know from your private life, um, you are not, you're not feeling good to be called um, to. So uh, the same applies as to email advertising. As co a call is um, also only allowed if the customer has consented to this. and. Uh, the thing is, it's irrelevant whether there is a customer or an entrepreneur because uh, we uh, rely on data protection rules and that there are no consumer protection rules. So, um, yeah, entrepreneurs and traders and commercial uh, yeah, recipients are uh, protected by data protection as well. So it doesn't make any difference if you're calling a customer or a, yeah. That is very important. That is a very important one because often I think that um, at least our readers from e-commerce news PL or our customers mm -hmm. they think that the GDPR only is yeah. uh, regarding B two C relations, but it is which also B two B. Yeah, which is yeah. not exactly okay. Um, but what if there is a problem with the order? Uh, what are mm -hmm. the boundaries of calling or mailing my customers? Um, how long do I? How long am I allowed? To, uh, to call my customer uh, yeah. when there is a problem? Um, as I've already mentioned, the basic is the consent, but there's also some exemptions. Uh, for example, you can call or email uh, to process the contract, or yeah, if there's any trouble with the contract, you're of course allowed. Um, the basic um, GDPR is um, it's so new, so we can't say that there's um, a timeline or a deadline where you have to stop uh, calling or yeah, emailing um, your customer. So if there's a problem, I think you can call him anytime. So for example, if um, one year there's a problem with your manufacturer, he can he called you and said there's a a certain risk of uh, health, for example, because there was a problem in the yeah, factory or something like that. You can think of many cases. So, of course, you can um, call or email your customer even after one year or two years because it's something that has to do with your contract. So, um, yeah, you can call him, but you are not allowed to say, hmm, you've um, already bought uh, this or that, and maybe you want to have uh, another um, whatever piece or something like that, a newest version. Um, so this is, or you should also not combine, um, yeah, yeah, prop something with concerning the order and advertising. So should leave it out of any advertising, just um, be neutral, uh, state, say what you have to say concerning the contract and that's it. So that's my yeah, suggestion, I would say. That's from the legal side, the reality is different. <laughs> but, yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm a we, we always, 
We always tell you, um, dear listeners and viewers, we always uh, tell you what is from the legal side. Yeah. Reality is always your choice. And of you course. This way or yeah. the other way, we inform you about the risks and what is allowed and what you do, what you choose to do yeah. is always, always your choice. So as um, we are also consumers, we have a lot of emails in our mailbox as well. And maybe Nikolai too. And we've never consented to any of these newsletters. So I absolutely know uh, what I'm talking of from the consumer side and um, from the, yeah merchant and trader side <laughs> exactly so um one last uh, thing about the privacy protection uh in daily online business um what if the customer um gave an unjustified product review or um seller feedback for example or merchant feedback on, on amazon um for example before even before the problem with the order has been solved Mm -hmm. um, can I call the customer and um, yeah, just tell him or ask him to remove this review because it's unjustified and in the end we've fixed all the problems and mm -hmm. the customer is in the end actually satisfied with his purchase but for example he forgot about um, this negative feedback or review. Okay. What can mm -hmm. we do about it? Yeah, well, um, the thing is, you have to know that uh, the customer or everyone uh, is legally allowed to give a, a, a bad or negative review. So it's a freedom of speech. So um, to call him just to say uh, that he should remove his bad review or yeah, add something or yeah, overthink, um, I wouldn't say because I, I wouldn't say to call him or I wouldn't recommend um, to call him because he could feel harassed, I would say, um, it, it basically has nothing to do with the contract. Um, so uh, at the moment, um, there are a lot of decisions in Germany where the court says he is allowed to say that he doesn't like your customer service. He is allowed to say that the product is or the product sucks or something like that. So you can't do anything against it because it's freedom of speech and so um, there are no court uh, decisions um, if you are allowed to call after a bad review or because it's an unjustified review but I wouldn't recommend it at the moment so maybe oh, I don't know I, I, I maybe you have an idea what you can do if you can send him a voucher or something like a yeah something to maybe make him feel a bit better and they remove that bad review and we give you a five dollar or five euro voucher but uh, as far as i know it's problem with amazon guidelines for example like that um yeah it's always not easy but i wouldn't recommend okay so you can, you can bribe the customer but uh, only if the marketplace allows it <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so you always have to like consider whether the risk of legal consequences is higher or than yeah. the, the negative consequences of the review itself. Because sometimes reviews and feedbacks can be destroying to the business yeah. and Absolutely. can, for example, completely um, eliminate the sales on the Amazon listing if there is only one star, for example. Um, then you have to consider whether you accept some uh, risk. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Some legal risk um, in order to have your um, sales back. Okay. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to add just um, to that mm -hmm. unjustified reviews. Of course, uh, there's also another direction. You can also uh, go to Amazon and eBay or every other review uh, your website. And even if there's a reason, you can um, uh, you have the right to uh, delay it or that Amazon, for example, delays uh, that review because it is not unjustified, but if it's wrong, because um, if your uh, customer says you are, uh, you're a criminal or something like that, or he states that there was nothing in the parcel, but you can you have evidence that there was something inside. For, there are cases, um, and if your uh, if the review is wrong or, um, for example, criminal, you can or you have the right to delay that um, review. You have to ask Amazon and eBay, or you can go to court if they do not, yeah, and don't do any steps. So just have that in mind. You there are steps or possible steps. So. Um, 
to uh, take action against a bad review. Okay. okay, so not only if you have the the um, only if you can prove it, only if you have evidence. Yeah, for example. Um, but um, still, it's always every single case has to be seen individually, and um, yeah. then you can check what what possibilities and what what options you have. Um, okay, so um, we uh, are done with our topics for today, and uh, now is the time uh, when our dear viewers can ask us uh, some questions regarding uh, German e-commerce law. So if there is any question, I will check in both chats. And um, yeah, you have on the on the right side, um, dear viewers, you have the, the uh, chat box. You can ask your questions there in Polish, German, or English. Um, and meanwhile, I will have a look at the other channel if there is any question over there. And of course, you can send us an email info dot uh, info at setup.pl info mopa setup.pl. Jeżeli są jakieś pytania, to zapraszam do kontaktu. Też uh, I'm gonna switch to Polish now because <laughs> it's easier. And um, so, um, jeżeli są jakieś tematy, które chcecie, żebyśmy omawiali uh, w następnym odcinku, czyli następny pierwszy wtorek miesiąca, to zapraszam do kontaktu. Cieszymy się bardzo, jeżeli przychodzą do nas propozycje tematów, bo wtedy wiemy, że, że będziemy mówić o czymś, co, co was właśnie interesuje, co was ciekawi. Um, so yeah, I asked to um, send us uh, some uh, topics we maybe could um, uh, handle in the next episode, next month. And um, as far as I can see, there is no question. So um, I guess, thank you, Yvonne, uh, for being You're with welcome. us today again. and. Um, we will see you in just one month at the next first well. Tuesday of uh, which will be uh, first Tuesday of October. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so thank you again, everyone, for watching us, and uh, have a good day. Bye bye. Bye.